Rafi's Rambles. Rafi's Rambles. Rafi's Rambles. Rafi's Rambles. Rafi's Rambles. Hola, you amazing artist, and welcome to the Media Studio. This is where we do uh, our videos, our music, and all that stuff. And right now I'm recording an audiobook. As you could imagine, we're pretty busy because of the exhibition. We have other things going on, and I'm finishing these audiobooks up. These audiobooks are meant to launch September 5th. So there's a lot of work, but I wanted to record a video and I figured what I'd do is do a book reading um, from my book because this is a really good chapter and it's something that I wanted to talk about anyway, which is what is your story? This chapter is called, So What's Your Story? And in this chapter, I go over my story and the importance of telling stories. So um, yeah, enjoy. Let's make sure everything is set up and here we go. So what's your story? That's right, the most dreaded question you could ask an introverted creative person is to share their story. I've seen artists lock in terror at the very mention of the word story. You've probably heard people in marketing talk about the importance of telling your story. Heck, I'm constantly going on about how important it is to tell your story, and I'm not even a marketing person. Anyone that knows anything about putting yourself out there will tell you that story matters. Honestly, you are either creating art or pointing fingers from the sidelines. If you're creating and putting yourself out there, then you have a compelling story already. If you're finger pointing, then you may be too busy with someone else's story and probably don't have your own. What is your message when you're finger pointing and criticizing? What does it say about you? Whether you're selling fine art or a bottle of this morning's fart, what ultimately matters is your story. Picasso, Van Gogh, Pollock, Dali, and any other artist that you know by name have been popularized by their story. Story is so powerful that large companies come up with story for what their product stands for. A Coke can teach the world to sing in perfect harmony because otherwise we wouldn't relate to an inanimate object. It is the story and association to the story that we relate to. As artists, we don't need to come up with the story. We are the story. This is the point where I've had artists angrily exclaim that they don't have a story. However, you do have a story, and it's still in the making. The simple act of putting yourself out there becomes a significant plot point in your narrative. When you go out there and face rejection, fear, being ignored, criticism, and you keep going despite all of that, your tale becomes an epic saga. Imagine for a moment that Dali, Picasso, Banksy, or Warhol quit when they ran into their first or second roadblock. Every one of these artists were ignored for vast portions of their life, yet never settled for living a life where they faced no obstacles. What if they traded in their paint supplies for a stable job and security? What if they didn't push the envelope and themselves through the financial rough times? What if they quit? There would be no story. Be yourself, be real, be personal. Your story may not feel like it's compelling, but it's not over. When you put yourself out there, the elements in life that put you where you are now will play a significant part in your narrative. However, every good epic needs hardship and growth. So when we embark on our journey to put ourselves out there, we create our own compelling story. Our novel is less of a hero's journey if we avoid rejection, fear, being ignored, or criticism and pain. For example, here's my story. As a kid, I dreamt of being an artist. I was a quiet and timid child in a very rambunctious and loud family. For most of my childhood, the adults were worried that there was something wrong with me. I would usually walk around quietly with a sketchbook instead of playing sports or roughhousing like the rest of the kids. As a teenager, my dream expanded to art, writing, music, and movies. I wanted to be a polymath creative and pursue living a creative life. However, I was expected to work the family business. I remember telling my dad that I was going to be an artist and he pretty much shot me down and laughed in my face. Around the same time, I blew an art scholarship by telling my art teacher off. At this point, I had settled into the life that was handed to me. Years later, I left the business and entered corporate life. The dream of being an artist burned inside me but I stuffed it down as an impossibility. At this point of my life, I barely created any art, and when I did, it was dark, depressing, and sad. It reflected who I was. Someone who had given up on their dreams. Someone who bought into all the negative voices telling him that he wasn't good enough. Someone who settled into a life 
he was told he was supposed to live. Okay, so let's pause for a moment. What if my story ended there? Honestly, it's quite the mood killer. Unfortunately, this story is way too common. It's not compelling because it's just everyday life for a lot of people. There is no hero's journey. Luckily for me, it wasn't the end. Here's the Cliff Notes version of what happened next in my life. Decades passed and I was sitting in a hotel room on a business trip and I caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror. I didn't recognize the miserable human looking back at me and I realized that life was too short. I decided to pursue my creative career no matter what obstacles would come my way. For over a decade, I pushed through countless failures, rejection, financial struggles, and mistakes. With every step I took, I faced biting winds of fear and doubt, but I kept moving forward. One day, years in, I was sitting in a room and happened to catch a glimpse of myself in a mirror. I saw a bright-eyed artist who was living his dreams. I continued to face every struggle that comes my way head-on, knowing that the life of your dreams doesn't fall in your lap. You must reach for it and happily push through the suck in order to make your own dreams a reality. The most significant shift during my career as an artist was realizing that life wasn't typical for artists. We're like mythical beasts and heroes in an epic tale. Our lives may not make sense to most people because we willingly put ourselves in the crosshairs of critics and rejection. Sadly, not too many people are willing to pursue their dreams. So just the act of putting yourself out there is compelling. Artists are creative, divergent thinkers, rogues, and pegs that don't easily fit in the social status quo. We can have a powerful narrative, but we must be willing to live that story. The art I created, the blogs I wrote, the shows I did, the people I met, the conversations I had, and the hardships I faced all became part of my epic saga. As a rogue artist, I realized that putting myself out there is my story. And my story is my creation. My story is just another art form. And we are all surrounded by these stories. Okay, all right, so that's where I'm going to end. Hopefully you guys like that. Um, I honestly wish I had the energy to read the entire book to you because that would be amazing. But it will be on Audible uh, September 5th, which is why we're working so hard to get it done. It's so funny how nerve-wracking it is putting this much of myself out there in the world after having done so many videos and putting artwork out there and all that stuff. But it's, it is an interesting thing. Even reading this story to you guys is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a little scary for me. So now it's time for me to get back to work. And, uh, yeah, I absolutely freaking adore you guys. Um, hopefully we'll be able to film some videos. If not, you will definitely see us in September and yeah, I adore you. Adios. Mwah.